Hi, and welcome to our Bite Size PD. I am Leanne Fisher. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so that you can see our presentation today. And I'll put it here in slideshow view for us. So welcome to the Kindergarten Oral Language Block Review. Um, for those of you, just something to think about while we're waiting is why do your students enjoy the oral language block? So just something to think about and reflect on. Um, I hit record, so we are recording folks. Thanks for being here or thanks for watching this at your own time. Our norms today are just to be committed, responsible, respectful, and be safe. Thanks for joining or taking the time on your own time to watch this. Again, I'm Leanne Fisher. If you have any questions, please just make sure you can reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Um, our norms, for those of you who uh, can mute it or you can unmute whatever you want, ask a question, I, pretty casual, laid back, just let me know how I can help interject whatever needs to be done. And if people start to join, that's okay too. That's great. Everything we do here in Canyon School District reflects that high quality academic and behavior instruction, decisions from decision making, and then team based problem solving. Today we're focusing on using that evidence based piece, specifically focusing on our, our standards in kindergarten for um, ELA, math, science, and social studies. Our intention today is today we will review the components of the kindergarten oral language block. And how will I know that you know it is when you can recall the components of plan de review and what they look like in the oral language block. So we're just gonna review what the oral language block is in kindergarten, what is planning time, what is due time, and what is review time. In the kindergarten oral language block, our biggest piece here is looking at this house, this visual that we've shared. Um, give yourself a thumbs up if you've seen this before. If you haven't, great, I, I'm glad you get to have something new today. And what we're looking at is really that foundation of the house, which is that secure base of the oral language development. And then everything else that we do builds on top of that, thinking about phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, building on top of each other, and then also having that vocabulary on the side, and then leading to that top piece of um, comprehension, thinking about our simple view of reading as well with word recognition, and having language um, comprehension equals to that reading comprehension. And before all of that is really building that language. We can't expect students to go do something if they don't have the language to be able to know what it is that you're talking about. So helping them have that um, receptive and expressive language. So here we have that being able to hear it, listen, being able to talk about it, be able to read about it, and then being able to write about it, looking at that highest form of application. So right here, we're having students being able to listen and talk through intentional play. We have our social climates. We have something that can be the laissez-faire, pretty laid back, a um, little bit of chaos it could look like in your room. We have that directive where you have the example of the students get a black piece of paper, two eyeballs, a white piece of paper, and one orange piece of paper, and everyone's penguins look the same. And when you walk down the hallway, you have no idea whose is whose because they're all the same, whether it's the penguins, um, whether it's the spring tree or um, a, a present that they're making for their family. It all looks the same in that directive environment. And what we want is that balance of supportive. And that's where that teacher is supporting the play with being intentional. And you can see here with this teacher being down at the floor with the level of the students and in increasing that language through the questions that are posed and um, the enjoyment of being with your students. So going back to our learning intentions and success criteria, planning time. One of the big pieces of the oral language block is the students are making a plan. They plan in a small group to establish a goal and express personal intentions for work time, whether it's the students at the table or you have them getting up and walking around. But the idea is, is that they're making a plan verbally or they're writing their plan in a journal. And then they're sharing that plan with the students and what they're going to do when they go to an area. The students have the six areas that they can plan from, block area, book area, house area, math area, writing area, and then the art area. And we try um, to never close these areas. It's not a, a thing that when students aren't uh, making good choices in these areas that we say, we're gonna close the block area because it's too noisy. So something to be mindful of that, that these are opportunities to teach versus just taking away. So truly try hard to have these areas opened and then mixing them up with different things that you can embed um, to, to make it fresh for students to wanna to go to that area. 
when I talked about when they're making that plan, it can be verbal in the beginning, but we really wanna to get to that place of our standards where students are doing their writing um, and that you're not just telling you what, the, what their plan is, but they're showing you what their plan is. And here's some of what our incredible teachers have done so far with their planning journals, allowing for students to just mark off where they're going and then being able to add that into that sentence form, as well as where will I go, picking where they're going and then writing it down to where they're actually just getting a plain piece of paper using a sentence frame and being able to write some of those high frequency words, looking for that opportunity to also assess the spaces in between their sentence, some capitalization, some punctuation at the end. So really a great way to capture the growth of their writing for something that you've maybe started at the beginning of the year that might've been a picture to where now we're looking at that, that sentence and having that complete thought of where they're going and then being able to date it so that you can see the progression of, of their growth for that planning time. And then being able to share with, the, with their colleagues or their students, their friends, where they're going to. Here's some examples of how we have the posters. If you do not have the posters in your building, please reach out to me through an email. I'm happy to send those to you, or if they're worn and you need some new ones, specifically looking at this block area poster or the house area poster, each area has one, as well as um, some teachers have been super creative with adding um, what they're gonna do when they go there as an example. So students have that anchor to write in their journal. So if they're going to the block area, I'm going to create um, whatever they wanna create with using Legos or blocks. And these are things that you actually have in that area with them. So you can see here's an example of a student who's making their plan, what they're doing, where they're going, and then being able to share that plan with their, with their friends. Um, the planning time, just something to think about. What makes planning time purposeful for you, for your students? And then what would you like to see your students doing at this time of year for planning? So have we moved past that place of where they're verbally just stating their plan? And have, are they having an opportunity to write where they're going to that plan? So the due time or work time is after they've made that plan, children move to their area to carry out their plan. It's okay if they change their mind, that's fine. That's a great conversation piece to say, I noticed that you plan here, but I noticed that you're over here. Tell me about that. Children learn to carry out their intentions, engage with materials and peers and solve problems. Um, how are they doing this? Using your areas, students will go and work with their intentions from their plan. And then having shared their plan with you, you can inquire about where they're going. So if you see a student who continues to go to the house area, you can go inquire with them about what they're doing in the house area, or maybe they'd be in interested to come with you to the block area and see what you could create there. But it allows for conversation and going back to that foundation of the house, that oral language, being able to um, build on that vocabulary that they have through play. Here are some examples that we have of our schools of what the due time looks like and how they're attaching it and integrating it with what they're doing with core instruction. So right now in Reading Street, we have our, our big book, the Talk With Me, Sing With Me book, um, or the Talk With Me poster, and you're putting those words underneath it, but then you're engaging in that in the library or the book area. So students are not only hearing those words in core instruction, but now you're taking it, taking the big book, taking that big poster and putting it in the book area so that there's another hit or another exposure of that terminology. Technology. Um, students are creating based off of that big book that they're hearing and being able to attach that in the art area and being creative with you just putting the materials in there and seeing what you can do with those materials, dropping that seed for an idea, but it's not a directive. They don't have to make the palm trees here. It's an idea that they can if they wanted to. Here's some more ideas. Uh, when I had talked about those six areas, we never close those areas, but we can integrate into those areas. So um, one of the books, the main selections from Reading Street talks about flowers, which is a great connection to the science standards. So making the um, house area becomes a flower shop. And that's a great way to put some things from outside. You can see this teacher had brought in some real flowers, had brought in some stem flowers, silk flowers, has the cash register here and is making this her flower shop. And this is a great opportunity to put in the magnifying glasses children can explore deeper into those flowers and what they see and think of the language that they can build when they're exploring. This teacher is here also going around and asking them about what they're doing, um, taking some pictures to prepare for that review time, but allowing herself to engage with what they're doing, posing questions about um, wondering and leaving those open-ended questions during that work time. 
Here's some more things that are at the math area, just putting out number stamps. Um, but at the same time in your core instruction, you've been working on adding up to numbers to five fluently. So why not put some stamps there, some manipulatives to add and subtract with and just see what they can do. Um, here's some more ways to explore with um, during the fall, there was a teacher who brought in some pumpkins so that they could look at classifying and sorting those different sizes, but also being able to look at different attributes and the language that can come from when we talk about um, different attributes. So review time, not every child has to review. It could be four to five students. You can um, kind of organize that through your five days, so that through those five days, all of your students have had an opportunity to share because they are five and six. So they tend to be a little egocentric and want to be heard and rightfully so they're excited about what they did. Um, so maybe that they're, they're sharing their plan, but then they're also bringing the materials that they made to retell what they did. Um, and then allow them a scaffold. Children don't have a problem with talking. It's when we want that to be organized talk that it can be a little bit of a struggle. So give them a sentence stem, you know, give them the microphone and then they don't steer off and just talking and excitement with the microphone, but you've given them a structure with today at blank, I blank. And then they maybe have what they did at the art area and what they created. Allow them to share with a partner um, so that once those maybe four to five have come up and shared, then you have an opportunity for now turn to your partner and I want you to use the sentence stem and tell them what you did during the oral, oral language block partner one raise your hand partner two raise your hand partner one you go first. And then set a timer and then switch that time for a partner two to be um, have the opportunity to share and then what you're doing here is you're essentially increasing those opportunities to respond increasing the oral vocabulary. And it's setting that expectation and routine that you all get to share it's just a matter of are you sharing to the whole group today or sharing to a partner today. Here's some examples of review time. Um, there was a few slides back where the teacher had her iPad going around taking videos and pictures. Here's a teacher who's got her phone taking pictures. One teacher uses the microphone um, during the review time. Before they get to that review time, having the opportunity for all children to stop what they're doing, get ready to clean up, and then get ready to come to the rug. So having that attention getter to prepare for review time, setting your timer for how much time is needed to clean up you know, within that two to three minute range. And predominantly kids like to beat that clock anyways to get down to be able to share, especially if you set that routine and expectation that it should be a relatively quick cleanup time. That way it has more time for play, plan time, or sorry, for due time. One student was able to bring up their um, activity from, or their plan or um, what they did during the writing area and put it on the document camera, share with their colleagues or their friends of what they did. And then some ways of approaching children's play. Um, there's four ways that we always have talked about, and I wanna review the four L's with you. And that is the look, listen, lean, and lower. So you're making eye contact, you're teaching children to have that opportunity to look at the person that they're speaking to. Then they're listening, and then they're gonna lean into that person and they're gonna lower their voice so that the conversation doesn't have to be for everyone to hear. It's for the two that are talking together to really have that intentional conversation. And then one way to approach children's play is the acronym was SOUL. And that's when you silently observe, understand, and listen. So as the teacher, before I just go over and maybe interrupt your play with your friends and that purposeful play, I might just silently observe what you're doing and try to understand what you're building or what you're writing. And then I'm gonna to listen to your conversation and then I'm gonna go in purposely and see where I can add to the conversation and not dominate the conversation, but where I can be an equal partner in their play. So thinking about the four L's in Seoul, if you need the posters for the four L's, please email me and I can send those to you as well. I'm happy to give you those for your board. Um, they are a great anchor for your students also to be able to have that routine for four L's, not just in the oral language block, but throughout any opportunity when you're having um, partner discussion and you need them to have the four L approach. If you need this poster, this is the observe and comment poster. This is for adult to child interaction. This is actually meant for you as the teacher, not necessarily the student. So this poster would be your anchor of when you're down doing the do with the students. Some ways to approach before um, or after that way you've looked at soul and you wanna silently observe and listen and understand. Here's some ways that you can post questions that can continue to have the conversation open and not close with a yes or no. Um, when we say things like, I wonder, or tell me more about how you made this tower right here. Or I see that you chose red to go on top and blue, blue blocks to go on the bottom. Tell me a little bit more about that. 
um, or I saw on your plan that you were going to make this in the kitchen. What, what materials will you need for that? Do, what, do you have a recipe, I wonder, that we could make? Um, and just being really intentional and building on that language. And if you have some of your amazing words from your core instruction that you need or some of the vocabulary for Envision 2020, that's where you can start to embed that so that they can hear it in context, but also in an everyday um, language as well, and not just in context of their, of their core instruction. Some resources for the oral language block in your curriculum map in the back after the ELA math um, before the reporting card standards, you have a year at a glance that will look at the big idea that tries to align those science and social studies integration intentionally. So that if you know um, unit two um, or unit six has these science core standards in here, what could I do to enhance those science standards within that oral language block? Um, same thing for social studies, I've got these standards. Here's where they're gonna be highlighted within that reading street, that integration. How can I pull that out and put that into one of my areas? Um, I'm happy to give some ideas for those um, to support those two standards and integrating those two standards in the oral language block. Um, that is the oral language block review. I hope that you are feeling set up for success with that plan to review, ensuring that students get all of those components um, and really staying to the fidelity of those three pieces for students and, and making sure that we're using that language, that it's not play, it's purposeful play. And that when we have it on our schedule, we tell students that we're going to the oral language block today and that it's not, um, it's not play time, it's not um, anything other than what it's meant to be so that students understand that there is intention to that and that you're being intentional with what you're putting in those areas for our students to give them the best access to that language um, so that they're set up for success. So again, I'm Leanne. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Thanks so much.